Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to a brand new series called Firewatch. This is a game that I was actually watching um, on Steam. I was actually currently away and out of town. I was gone to Disney World, and when this game released, I was just playing in the hotel room just to check it out, and it's something I'm very interested in. So I thought it would be something that I would really enjoy uh, playing with you guys. So um, this is Firewatch. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into a brand new game. We'll go ahead and delete where I was uh, just messing around with it. And let's start it off. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. Just so you guys know, this is not how the whole game is. This is just the intro to the game. You are drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? Or you, you're pretty. Let's ask her what her major is. You slur the word major and it smells like cores. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? What's the... Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried she hurts your feelings, she asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about everywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's freaking cool. Uh, you pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket, or you adopt the Shepherd and her name is May Mayhem. Let's give her the dog she wants. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him, too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not even smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. That would be pretty good, or one day, why rush? I think that'd be pretty good. Let's settle down and start a family. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably the, for the best their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Nineteen eighty. It's a Thursday night, and Julie is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You ignore her or you get mad. I'm gonna ignore her. 
You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Let's flex like He-Man. You look awesome. Nineteen eighty two. During the summer as you and Julie enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away, or you beat his freaking face in. I'm gonna beat his face in. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't even f you don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cop shows up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984, plans to have kids gets waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut. 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job or agree if she com uh, commutes back and forth. Let's convince her not to take the job. You tell her that this means you two won't have a family. She says that's bullcrap. She's totally right. She asks if her taking the job means you won't come with her. You say yes. Again, bullcrap. But she decides not to take it. 1985. Julia is asked to leave Boulder on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it, or you make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. Maybe we should... Let's have some macaroni. It works. You watch Dallas on TV and sleep together on the couch. Oh my. There's the drawing of me flexing. <laughs> Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn child little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988, you spend your days following Julie around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere within or with 24 hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to move her into a full time care facility or you are determined to take care of her by yourself. I want to take care of her by, by myself. I'm not going to send my wife to a a home. Nineteen eighty 
It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door or you trust that she sleeps like a rock. Uh, I don't want to lock her in her room, but let's trust that she sleeps like a rock. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night, you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a .10 and are taken off to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit f soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. And this is where I'm assuming we took the job for the fire watch. All right, looks like we have to enter the lookout tower. Turn on the power. Hold left shift to activate radio. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. You killed three ex-husbands. You're rebelling against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. Um, Nobody back home can stand you? Okay, you're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you. Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Ouch! Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. Okay, Good night. bye. Let's see... I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close? Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. Firewatch, day one. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. All right, guys, and that's where we're going to wrap up our first episode of Firewatch. Hope you guys enjoyed that little introduction. And we'll see you when we return.